Jonathan Harris was an American character actor. Two of his best-known roles were as the timid accountant Bradford Webster in the TV version of The Third Man and the prissy villain Dr. Zachary Smith of the 1960s science fiction television series Lost in Space. Near the end of his career, he provided the voice of Manny, a praying mantis in the animated feature A Bug's Life, and the cleaner in the animated sequel Toy Story 2. Early Life, the second of three children, Harris was born to a poor family in the Bronx, New York City. His parents were Sam and Jenny Karasuchin, Russian Jewish immigrants who eked out a living in Manhattan's Garment District. His family resided in a six tenant apartment complex. To raise money, his mother took in boarders, some of whom were given Jonathan's bed, forcing Jonathan to sleep on dining room chairs. From the age of 12, he worked as a pharmacy clerk. While there was little money for luxuries, Jonathan's father took efforts to expand his son's cultural horizons. This included trips to the Yiddish theater, where he was encouraged by his father to listen to opera. Young Jonathan was enthralled. He discarded his Bronx accent and began to cultivate more sophisticated English tones. Although he could seldom afford tickets, Broadway plays were also an interest. Before graduating in 1931, at the age of 16, from James Monroe High School, he had also developed interests in archaeology, Latin, Romantic poetry and Shakespeare. He had difficulty fitting in with his peers, who included classmate Estelle Rayner, mother of future actor-director Rob Rayner. With the exception of his girlfriend, Gertrude Brookman, whom he subsequently married. In 1932, he legally changed his name from Karasuch into Harris, apparently without informing his parents. That same year, Harris's work at the pharmacy led him to attend nearby Fordham University where he majored in pharmacology. He graduated from Fordham in 1936 and, for a time, worked in various drug stores. Career equals Stage equals, acting was Harris's first love. At 24, he prepared a fake RA copyright sumer copyright and tried out for a repertory company at the Millpond Playhouse in Long Island. New York and appeared in several of this troupe's plays, prior to landing a spot in the Red Company. In 1942, Jonathan won the leading role of a Polish officer in the Broadway play The Heart of the City. Adopting a Polish accent, he advised the producers that his parents were originally from Poland. In 1946, he starred in A Flag is Born, opposite Quentin Reynolds and Marlon Brando. Equals television equals Harris was a popular character actor for 30 years on television, making his first guest appearance on an episode of the Chevrolet Teal Theatre in 1949. The part led to other roles in such shows as, The Web, Lights Out, Goodyear Television Playhouse, Sanford and Son, two episodes of Hallmark Hall of Fame, Armstrong Circle Theatre, three episodes of Studio One, Telephone Time, Schlitz Playhouse of Stars, Climax. The Outlaws the Twilight Zone, Bonanza, The Rogues, The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet, two episodes of Bewitched, among many others. Harris returned to television, where he landed a co-starring role opposite Michael Rennie in The Third Man, from 1959-65. He played Bradford Webster, an eccentric, cowardly assistant. Half the episodes were shot in London, England. The rest were filmed in Hollywood. Harris's teenage son would visit the set at this time, and Harris did whatever he could to bridge the gap between father and son and try to make up for lost time. From 1963-65, Harris co-starred in the sitcom The Bill Donna Show. He played Mr. Phillips, the pompous manager of a posh hotel who is constantly at odds with his bumbling Bolivian bellhop, the Bill Donna character, Joe's a copyright G. My copyright Nez. This formula presaged the popular John Cleese hotel comedy, Faulty Towers. Don Adams rounded out the cast as an inept house detective via Euro his character, dialogue, and other comedy bits would soon carry over into his Maxwell Smart role on Get Smart. In similar fashion, several of Harris's one-liners from the show, such as Oh, The Pain, along with many character mannerisms, became part of the Dr. Zachary Smith character on Lost in Space. In an apparent homage to his earlier role, 
Harris played a similarly pompous diplomat on Get Smart in 1970. His female assistant is named Zachary. He also guest starred on The Ghost and Mrs. Muir. His last series guest starring role was on an episode of Fantasy Island. He also starred as the character Fagan in the first episode of the science fiction show Arc 2. Equals Dr. Zachary Smith in Lost in Space equals. Harris was cast over two other actors for the role of the evil and conniving double agent, Dr. Zachary Smith on Lost in Space for CBS. The character did not appear in the original 1965 pilot episode, nor did the robot. The series was already in production when he joined the cast and starring co-starring Billing had already been contractually assigned. So Harris successfully negotiated to receive special guest star Billing on every episode. Also starring on the show were several established and popular actors including, Guy Williams as Professor John Robinson, June Lockhart, as John's wife, Dr. Maureen Robinson, Mark Goddard, as the Jupiter 2's pilot, Judy Robinson's mutual attraction and Dr. Smith's hot-blooded adversary, Major Don West, Angela Cartwright, as the Robinson's middle child, Penny Robinson, and two new stars, Marta Crisson, as their oldest child, Judy Robinson and Billy Moomy, as their youngest child and loyal friend to Dr. Smith, Will Robinson. A strong bond developed between Harris, Moomy, and some of the rest of the cast during the show's three-year tenure. From its debut, it was successful, until midway through the first season it had stiff competition from another newcomer, Batman, which dominated TV ratings. The show continued the tradition of such successful 1960s sci-fi series such as Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. Midway through the first season, due to Harris's popularity on the show, he began to rewrite the dialogue. Allen approved his changes and gave him carte blanche as a writer. Harris subsequently stole the show, mainly via a seemingly never-ended series of alliterative insults directed toward the robot, which soon worked their way into popular culture. When the show was renewed for its third and final season, it remained focused on Harris's character, Dr. Smith. While the series was still solidly placed in the middle of the ratings pack, the writers appeared to run out of fresh ideas, and the show was unexpectedly cancelled in 1968, after 83 episodes. One of Harris's co-stars, Mark Goddard, said of the show's eventual shift toward Harris's character, I guess it was because they felt that the people wanted to see more of the robot and Jonathan. Originally, when it was more science fiction, Irwin can really do those things so beautifully. So he really took those away from himself when he wanted to deal with the robot and Jonathan playing games, cooking souffle copyright s, or whatever else. Goddard was also asked if he had gotten along well with other castmates, other than Harris and Moomy. No. There was a lot of tension on the set for the three years it was filmed. There was always a lot of tension, because the show started going more toward the robot and Smith. There were hard feelings from especially Guy and June, and also myself, but not as heavy as them, because they were originally sold as being the stars of the show when it began. It ended up that Harris became the star of the show. The last thing that he said, I was friendly with everyone, pretty much. I think there was a period for a couple of months when I was angry at Jonathan Harris, for the same reasons, feeling that he was getting too many shows thrown his way. But we talked today. I see him, and there's no animosity between us. But I also had my disagreements with Guy Williams. When they started taking shows away from Guy, giving more to Jonathan, then Guy would come in and demand whatever I had in the show, any confrontations with Smith, or to save the kid or anything. He'd end up doing all of that and I was the one that got squeezed out. I was doing almost nothing. There was one time where I went in to do a bit and had learned my lines, and was all ready to do my scene, when Guy started reading my lines. I said, what's going on? And he said this is my scene now. They had given the lines to him. And that's where I got angry and walked off. After a reunion of the entire surviving cast in December 1990, Goddard continued to stay in touch with Harris until his friend's death, late in 2002. Bill Moomy said about Harris's guest role that in his first episode, 
it was actually implied that this villainous character that sabotaged the mission and ended up with us, was going to be killed off after a while. Mumi added, Jonathan played him as written, which was this really dark, straight-ahead villain. Mumi also said of Harris's work on space, and we'd start working on a scene together, and he'd have a line, and then in the script I'd have my reply, and he'd say, no, 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 dear boy. No, no, no. Before you say that, the robot will say this, 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 and this, and then, you'll deliver your line. Bill also said of Harris's portrayal, he truly, truly single-handedly created the character of Dr. Zachary Smith that we know a Euro this man, we love to hate, coward who would cower behind the little boy, oh, the pain. Save me, William. That's all him. About the show's cancellation, Mumi said, I don't know what happened. All I know is that we were all told we're coming back. Then, you know we got a call that we weren't. The death of Harris's father in 1977 drew Harris and Mumi closer. The two kept in touch for almost 35 years until Harris's death. On June 14, 1995, Mumi and the rest of the crew paid tribute to series' as creator Erwin Allen, who died late in 1991. In 1996, Mumi was reunited with Harris alongside Leonard Nimoy, of Star Trek fame, at a Disney World convention. It was also reported in 1997 that Mumi, Harris and the rest of the surviving cast appeared on the inside cover of TV Guide to promote the new movie, while the sci-fi channel would feature a Lost in Space marathon. In the actual 1965 television premiere of Lost in Space, the blast-off of the Jupiter 2 is set in the future on October 16, 1997. The Sci-Fi Channel began the Lost in Space Marathon in real time 32 years later on October 16, 1997. Equals typecasting equals. Although he is considered something of a cult icon for this role, Harris became typecast as the Fae, somewhat effeminate villain. Alan cast him as a villainous Pied Piper in an episode of Land of the Giants. Approached by Erwin Allen, a second time, to star in a children's series, Jumbelina and the Teamers, Harris turned it down. In 1970, Harris played the role of another not so likable villain, when he guest starred as the Bulmanian ambassador in the Get Smart episode, How Green Was My Valet. Harris was also a co star, alongside Charles Nelson Riley, in the series Uncle Croc's Block, in which Harris and Riley portrayed malcontents producing a children's TV show. Harris played the director and Riley the titular host. Uncle Croc. A more favorable guest role of Harris's was his portrayal of Charles Dickens in a 1963 episode of Bonanza. He also appeared in two 1961 episodes of The Twilight Zone, one of which, being The Silence, and in a very interesting and remarkable character reversal, as a hero, in which he ended up defending a young man challenged to be silent for a whole year at a prestigious gentleman's club. In 1971 episode of Night Gallery, entitled Since Aunt Ada Came to Stay, Harris played Professor Nicholas Porteus. Porteus's knowledge of witches and how to destroy them, led to his death, but helped resolve the episode's conflict. Equals voiceover and guest starring roles equals, Harris spent most of the remainder of his career as a voice actor, heard in television commercials as well as cartoons such as Channel Ump T3, The Banana Splits, My Favorite Martians, Rainbow Bright, Darkwing Duck, Happily Ever After, Problem Child, Visionaries, Knights of the Magical Light, Freakazoid, A Bug's Life, Buzz Lightyear of Star Command and Toy Story 2. He also had several cameo and guest appearances, including Zorro, Bewitched, Fantasy Island, Sanford and Son, Arc 2, and Uncle Croc's Block. Harris also provided the voiceover of the silent character Lucifer on the original Battlestar Galactica series. He also did voiceover work in an episode of the animated Superman series. Harris taught drama and gave voice lessons to Chuck Norris and was credited for this by Norris in Good Guys We're Black. He starred in the Saturday morning children's series Space Academy and Uncle Croc's Block in the mid-70s and was a well-known TV spokesman for the International House of Pancakes. In 2009 his final performance was finally released. 
he had done a recording session in 2001 for a short animated film titled The Bolt Who Screwed Christmas in which he plays the narrator and the Bolt. He died about a year after his recording session, long before the independent film was completed. A film also features voiceover work by Bill Moomy, Angela Cartwright and Marta Crison, their parts added to the film after his death as a small tribute with the film dedicated in his memory. Equals later career equals, in 1990, Harris reunited with the cast of Lost in Space to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the show's debut, an event attended by more than 30,000 fans. In 1995, Harris also appeared in the fantasy world of Irwin Allen, a television tribute to Irwin Allen, who had died four years prior. Harris reprised his role as Dr. Smith in the one-hour TV special Lost in Space Forever in 1998. However, unlike his co-stars in the original series he refused to make a cameo appearance in the motion picture version of Lost in Space earlier that year. He announced, I've never played a bit part in my life and I'm not going to start now. Gary Oldman played the part of Dr. Smith in the film, but as a more genuinely menacing and less likable character than Harris is on TV. An episode of The Simpsons has a cameo of Dr. Smith along with the robot. Multiple episodes of Freakazoid had a character of a cowardly Professor Jones. In both Professor Jones utters his catchphrase Oh, the pain. In case there was any question about the parody, numerous characters would ask him, Weren't you on a TV show with a robot? During the months leading up to the film's release, the Sci Fi Channel aired Lost in Space marathons in many markets in which each of the actors were interviewed. On April 9, 1998, Harris appeared as a guest on the talk show Biography, where Harris fondly reminisced about his Lost in Space days, admitting he would stay up nights thinking of new insults for the robot because he enjoyed the interaction so much. Host Conan O'Brien brought one of his characters, Pimpbot 5000, onto the set, and Harris went into character as Dr. Smith and proceeded to insult Pimpbot. Shying away from his usual dry, sarcastic, and often self-deprecating style, Conan confessed to Harris that he brought him on the show just to have him insult Pimp Bot, and that the moment made his day. The year 2009 saw the release of Harris's last work. Prior to his death, Harris had recorded voice work for the animated theatrical short The Bolt Who Screwed Christmas. Wanting to pay tribute to Harris, Writer-slash-director John Wardlaw wrote an additional scene for the film and asked Lost in Space co-stars Bill Moomy, Marta Crisson and Angela Cartwright to contribute their voices to the film. The three actors reunited in the recording studio on June 14, 2006. This was the first time they had all been together in something unrelated to Lost in Space and it was a blast. They listened to what Harris had recorded and there were laughs and some tears. John Wardlaw Hobbies. Throughout his long life, Jonathan had a number of hobbies gourmet cooking, watching movies, reading, traveling, painting, magic, playing piano, listening to opera, spending time with children, gardening, and knitting. He also did some dancing in his spare time. According to the AD biography, on season 3, episode 19 of Lost in Space, Jonathan's character, Dr. Smith, did a groovy 1960s dance with Penny and Will Robinson. Personal life and death, Jonathan was married to his childhood sweetheart, Gertrude Brookman, from 1938 until his death in 2002. She died of natural causes, at the age of 93, on August 28, 2007. They had one child, Richard, born 1942. Harris's father, Sam Carey Suchin was struck by a car while crossing the street, in New York City, in 1977. He was 93 years old at the time of his death. In late 2002, Harris and the rest of the surviving cast of the TV series were preparing for an NBC two-hour movie entitled Lost in Space, The Journey Home. However, two months before the movie was set to film, he was taken to the hospital with what he thought was a back problem. But on November 3, 2002, just one day before he was scheduled to return home, Harris died of a blood clot to the heart. He was 87 years old. He is interred in Westwood Village Memorial Park Cemetery, in Westwood Village, in Los Angeles. His funeral eulogists included longtime friends, 
Director Arthur Hiller. Former 20th Century Fox Television executive and producer Kevin Burns. And fellow Lost in Space castmate Bill Moomey. Quotes, on his characteristic mid-Atlantic accent, I'm not British, just affected. On receiving a guest starring role for every episode of Lost in Space, that was the first time ever in history that anybody got special guest star. I started that whole nonsense. On the cancellation of Lost in Space, when the curtain comes down, you're disappointed. Always, the curtain comes down. I've done so much work, and then the curtain comes down and you go on to something else. When his father finally arrived at the theatre to see his son, he came to the dressing room, gave me a hug and a kiss and said, You belong here. I never forgot it. On trying his hand on being a leading man of the 1940s, I thought I was Cary Grant. Oh, I looked into the mirror, and said, Yes, yes. It's Cary Grant. And then, I pulled myself together and said, Are you kidding? You're a character man. References External links Jonathan Harris at the Internet Movie Database Jonathan Harris at the Internet Broadway Database Jonathan Harris, The Man, The Myth, The Legend, The Bolt Who Screwed Christmas, Final Film of Jonathan Harris